Hi, it's Rachel. I want to dive into some aspects of Revelation, specifically about the living creatures, okay, around the throne that you see in Revelation 4. So let me start, let me start first of all in chapter 5 in Revelation, okay? In verse 1 it says, And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back sealed with seven seals. Okay. The, the scroll that is there is the heart. Okay. Our, the book that is spoken of is truly our heart. We're the epistle. The words of God are written on our hearts. This is the new covenant. This is, this is the age that we're moving into. It's not the old covenant where it was written on stone, which also symbolized a heart of stone that could not even receive the words of life, could not receive the words of truth. And when people's hearts are really hard, they can't receive the words of life. So even when you're speaking the words of life to them, they cannot be received. And that's what Jesus showed when he came and he spoke. Even though he was speaking the words of life, the people could not receive them because their heart was stone. It couldn't, they, they couldn't receive them. So in the Old Testament, the stone tablets represented that. So you had this law that they could not fulfill and they could not walk in because their hearts were hardened. They were unable to walk by those truths, okay, the words of life. So the new covenant is about our hearts being recreated into hearts that are crafted in the truth of God, His words. And so this scroll that is written on the inside and the back, sealed with seven seals, is actually our heart that is encased in our tomb. These flesh bodies, this flesh existence, a heart, a mind, a heart, an outward exterior, that all creates a tomb that is holds our spirit. And when we're first come, our spirit is dead, is a corrupt spirit. And that's the first thing that changes is that you receive what? Right, the Spirit. Baptized with fire in the Spirit, in the Holy Spirit. is the Spirit. And that's the first thing that starts to, that comes in that changes you. Okay? So in this scroll, in our heart, written in this tomb, written on the inside, that's why it's written on the inside. It's inside the tomb, it's written, and this has been the engraving of Christ, who his spirit of truth came up within us, and he has written on the inside of our tomb and on the back. Okay, so it's not something that's outward that people can read. It's not on the front, okay, or on the outside. And it was sealed with seven seals. Okay, these seven seals are the different... There's seven eyes, which you see in Zechariah, and there's seven, so there's seven concepts or seven different understandings that we gain because it is the truth that sets you free. So it's like seven levels of understanding and, and things that change us to free us from this tomb. Remember, it's by God's word that he creates and he destroys. It's his word. His word is very powerful. It is actually by our words, our thoughts, our words that we create our reality. It all comes down to words, thoughts, beliefs, okay? And so this tomb is sealed, okay? So what's inside is trapped in this entity and that's what you discover is you as I mentioned before in a previous video as you start to be changed God changes you from the inside out he starts with your mind and with your heart you get a new you get his spirit you get in tune with that spirit 
He starts changing your mind and your heart. And, though it, and as those two kind of work together, because the more understanding you have, it starts changing your heart and your desires and your affections and your passions. Okay, so the two of those are working together, but then you come to a place where you are, it's like you awaken, but you realize you're inside a tomb. Just like Christ, he awakened, but he's like inside this tomb and then he comes out. Okay, that's why he encased in that stone tomb was also, that's what it represents, that we're, we're in that hardened exterior that comes from having lived with a mind and a heart that was crafted out of stone. Just hardness, rebellion against God. So inside here, Christ has been working and he's been writing, right? And so now we understand that it's sealed with seven seals. So to come out, those seals would have to be opened or understood. So it says then in verse two, then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? Who is worthy to give you understanding to raise you from the dead? And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. Why? Because it's like within us. Okay? And let me go back in Zechariah and read those verses for you. Let's see if I can find... Okay, so in Zechariah 3... Verse 8, it says, Hear, O Joshua, the high priest, you and your companions who sit before you. For they are a wondrous sign. For behold, I am bringing forth my servant, the branch. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua, upon that stone are seven eyes. Okay, like seven eyes, seven, seven seals, seven concepts of understanding. Awareness. Okay, eyes are light, that's understanding. Behold, I will engrave its inscription, says the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of the, that land in one day. Okay, behold, I will engrave its inscription. So what do we see? This scroll, same thing that has been inscribed. Okay, it's sort of the, the keys to freedom like a combination lock, okay? It's opening up the prison doors. Verse four in Revelation five says, so I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. We cannot free ourselves. It, we can't figure it out. We have it, the church, which is the true temple of God, which Peter, which, Christ said is built on the rock. Okay, that is, and it comes by revelation. Not by a person, but by revelation that comes from Christ, that comes from within. So it has to be his revelation. Okay. So verse 5 says, but no one of the elders, but one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Behold, the lion, the tribe of Judah, the root of David has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. Christ loose the seven seals in us. Okay, so then let's go down to verse 9. It says, you are worthy to take the scroll to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth. This chapter is introducing the process by in which we become priests where we become in the likeness of Christ, where he unseals the tomb to where his spirit that is coming, the kingdom comes within, can come up within us and out. Okay, and that's why there was so much, that's why he was weeping. Because if those tombs stay sealed, because he's coming through us, then we're trapped 
okay, this death pit endures forever unless the, the tombs are opened, okay? And that spirit of God can come in us and come through us. That is how hell and Hades and death are destroyed and redeemed by infusing them with life. So now he is worthy to open the seals, right? He, and this is where it says, right? Because he was slain. He, the, that fullness of God, he carried it into this death realm. And he, by the wisdom of coming up out of death himself, is able to give us the wisdom and understanding as the perfect shepherd as a perfect high priest who suffered as we did to lead us out of death. That is why it's so significant that he entered it. One, that he gave us his spirit, that we had a, to partake of his spirit. Two, that he holds the wisdom to bridge the gap to go from death to life. And so you make what was dead become alive. It's like Going back to my analogy of the caterpillar and the butterfly, it's like he give, he's working within the caterpillar, giving it all its instructions of how to morph into a butterfly. Okay, God, and that's such a beautiful example because what is dead and dies in every way, yet is alive, and yet never really dies. It dies in its different parts, and we do the same thing. So this is what he makes us kings and priests because he makes us in his likeness. He is a king and priest. Christ is a king and priest. Remember that cherubim? He makes us his reflection. We become a perfect reflection of him, that tree of life reflecting. He reflected this God perfectly. That's why he said, if you see me, you've seen the Father. That gold is the reflection. And so we become as he is. That's why he calls us brethren because we become as he is we become that reflection okay he's the one that does that so he makes us kings and priests with him we sit and we reign with him and that is why okay so now you, you have this praise that is going on through the rest of that chapter now when you get into um i'll start this in my next video where i'm going to start diving into the different seals that he's unsealing for us so inside our tomb, this is what we go through for the tomb to be unsealed and thus his spirit to be set free in this earth and creation and for him, which is what Revelation is all about, to be revealed. It's beautiful.